Thanks everybody who's coming in uh, to watch. A couple days ago we had a bunch of Nick Fit matches um, using a brew that Dave Salas set up. Mm -hmm. Today he's actually going to do the deck tech for it. He's going to go over some of the card choices, what they do. He's going to go over the overall game strategy of the deck and how it runs. And I'm going to turn it over to Dave after that. All right. Thank you all for uh, coming out tonight. We're going to go over a little deck tech for the value, value portion of Nick Fit, not the Erector Nick Fit, which is a slightly bigger mana deck. Well, tries to cheat out different Planeswalkers, Nico Bolas, or some big enchantments like, you know, omniscience, a few other things that could be very good. But first, we're just going to go over some of the basic things with Nick Fit here. Just the four the four staple cards, the Veteran Explorers, the whole mana engine of this deck, the creature that looks so innocent on paper. No pun intended. And we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to just basically just use this creature, try to get out as early as humanly possible. Again, another no pun intended. Um, just try to get this out, get it killed. Uh, good ways to kill that are blocking their creatures, which they probably don't want to attack into you if they don't have any basics in their deck. Like most most decks in Legacy have some basics, but not more than one or two usually, and they don't really want to kill this creature. So when you put it out, they're hesitant to attack into it because when you die, you get nice basic lands out of your deck, which we tend to play more than the average amount, unless you're counting miracles, which is an, which is you know. We don't want to talk about that deck right now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, good, the easiest ways to get this killed, like I said, blocking. Uh, the flashback on Cabal Therapy here, which is great hand disruption. Great against many types of decks. Just pick out key pieces. If you don't know what you're doing, if you don't know what to name, maybe you can wait a turn, see what they're playing. You know, probably don't want to do this card in the blind ever. The sacrifice, the flashback to sacrifice a creature, the prime creature would be the Veteran Explorer. Because you get that nice value off of it, which allows you to cast another card right after the therapy. So, it's also a good late game too, you know, if you have some things, some other cards we'll talk about later, the extra value off that sacrifice, we can talk about that. And the last, I guess one of the main staples of the deck would be Green Sun Zenith. What I try to do with this build, which most people have been doing, is make every creature in the deck base green. Just have at least one green symbol in the converted mana cost, and the mana cost, just so we can grab it with Green Sun Zenith, we can toolbox out any specific creature we want. Oh, we need a card back of our graveyard, we're going to get this Eternal Witness. We need to eat a card out of their graveyard. We're going to get the scavenging ooze. We need to, you know, we need to like block and maybe gain some life off our lands. We're going to get this course of crucifix. Or the most infamous play on turn one is just green sun zenith for zero, grabbing our dryad arbor to <laughs> ramp us out even, even, even further because nothing says that more than dryad arbor off of one of our, off a forest or a bayou to next turn. You can go veteran explore into cabal therapy and just destroy their hand and ramp out a couple more lands. We'll have four lands before they have two most likely, which is. Way above par, which allows us to cast more of our big spells in this deck. All right, just a few other things here. A lot of the other staple cards, Pernicious Deed. Some people run two, some people run three. It's definitely a needed card in this deck as a wrath effect. It gets rid of basically everything that our opponents could throw at us. If we're playing against uh, Artifact, uh, Steel Stompy, we'll wrath their board basically for two. Never have to do it for three. Maybe sometimes you do this for four if they have Lodestone Golem out. But most of the time, just for two, we'll destroy everything you need. Mm -hmm. And unless, mismatching copies yeah, we have for mismatched maximum copies. tilt value. Yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll try to keep this one unless we draw it. <laughs> and then, just but yeah, that's pretty much your answer for almost this any, is, anything, right? Oh, this is this pretty much is anything but planeswalkers. I mean, but then you know, once we were at the board, if we have a larger creature out, say like our, I don't know, maybe Sea Drainer or some of these other cards here, we'll talk about in a little bit. There's very specific choices made that. I've liked and I've tested out and have done very well for me. And after using that, you have a way to get that right back from the graveyard, right? Yeah, I have ways just... to get this back. I can, you know, there's there's loops I can do with this, loops I can do with this and Eternal Witness and a few other cards I have in my deck. Which, I mean, once a Pernicious Deed hits the graveyard, it can get it can come out, so it's not like it's a one-time and done. There are ways to recur cards and get extra value from our creatures mm -hmm. and, sort, and enchantments. Uh, next few things here, just going to go over a couple pieces of removal. Assassin's Trophy... It's just catch-all, and also because we're putting so much strain on their basics, just so much strain on taking lands out of their deck, they're usually decks play one to two basics. Once we kill that Veteran Explorer, they probably have no basics left, so Assassin's Trophy is straight up instant speed. You could also um, destroy your own oh, yeah, Veteran I can, Explorer and get three lands. Yeah, I can get three lands off Assassin's Trophy. It's net plus one mana, which is great. Mm -hmm. And if they try to counter Assassin's Trophy targeting your own creature, you might be ahead, or you're behind on lands and they want to stop you there, but... It's always it's always interesting killing your own creature with Assassin's Trophy just to get more lands out of your deck since we do play six basics. 
they're some of the main lands we're going to grab most of the game anyway. We're going to see most of them out. And like I said, Assassin's Trophy, just a good catch-all. We're playing against decks that have very few lands. We might want to destroy those. We can destroy Ink Moth Nexus if we're playing against Infect. It's mm -hmm. just a way to catch against that if they don't have any way to protect it. There's just, you know, so many things we can do to help ourselves there. And next up, Path to Exile again. Most of the same rules as Assassin's Trophy, but this just exiles a creature. And they, you know, basics for one mana, you can get rid of pretty much anything. It helps you against Merit Lage or Zombie Fish if you need to get rid of an Angler just to get through and... You know, we know that the blue black shadow decks really don't play that many basics if maybe one maybe one maybe one island, but that's a personal choice. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty and, good way. And why is this played over Swords of Power Share? Uh, Swords think? of Power Share is like okay, the life gain can be relevant sometimes. We don't put some we don't put the fastest clock on decks for more of a grindy matchup. If we can get to the late game, we're probably gonna win with value engines. Mm -hmm. So if we, you know, kill their exile their creature and they have no more basics, we did one man exile a creature with no downside there. Sometimes they get a basic, but that's fine. We can talk about ways to get rid of those later. And then some more of the core creatures of the deck are Tireless Tracker here, just straight up value. He's a three, you know, three two for three. He gets you every time you hit a land drop, which this deck loves to make its land drops. You keep getting clues, so if you find yourself late in the game with no cards in your hand, you're probably going to have maybe two or three clues from your Tireless Trackers later. They may have already died, but those clues stick around. So we can get some pretty good, pretty good value off drawing some cards. And if he does happen to stay, and you start cracking the clues. He'll become a one mana. He'll become a three mana force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. okay. Oh, and heaven forbid them if you have both Talos Dragons out at the same time and start playing fetch lands. You're gonna have so much card advantage later. Again, it's <laughs> another way this deck can grind and stay ahead mm -hmm. through the late game. Eternal Witness. Not too much to be said. We can use our Green Sun to grab an Eternal Witness to get a key piece back from our deck, like that Pernicious Deed, or maybe an Assassin's Trophy to you know get rid of something very particular. Mm -hmm. This card is nice catch all. It gets anything we want back and. You know, but just, it fulfills a, a really a core function of the deck too, right? Yeah, recursion. <coughs> recursion is a main key portion of this deck. We just, you know, get, get back anything we want in our graveyard. If it goes there, we want to get maybe a fetch land. Maybe we play this on three because we need a fetch land for next turn. We grab it, get the fetch land back, so we get our fourth land to play some of our four drops just so we can keep going. If they haven't, maybe so they haven't killed our veteran explorer because they, you know, don't want to see it die and have us ramp. Mm -hmm. So it's always a great way to get extra pieces out of the graveyard. Mm hmm. And we get scavenging who's here. He's just a nice little. He's a you know in, 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 innocent two two. But if you're playing in you know, storm, uh, maybe the new blue red Delver deck is playing Dreadhorde Arcanist, and they want to you know hit that bolt out of their graveyard to kill something. You just eat it in response and get rid of their target. And it's a one three, so you can probably easily block it with almost. There's, there's little downside because they hadn't bolted that from their hand to begin with. They probably mm -hmm. don't have one. And there's no. And then like I said, also. Yeah. And it is helpful against reanimator. Well, reanimator eat their cards. Yeah. yeah, plus it helps you gain life. Makes another makes another slightly larger creature to get you know just get out of range. And it's good against dread. It could be it may be slow, but it's decent against dredge to get rid of grave trolls, bridge from belows. Mm -hmm. At least it's something like on, on game one. Yeah, it's, it's okay against dredge game one because you can hit small pieces out of their deck. I mean their graveyard. Sorry. Oh, the graveyard is basically their deck. We'll just put mm -hmm. it that way. They play yeah. it in the graveyard ninety nine percent <laughs> of the time. True. We got Siege Rhino here, uh, you know, Mr. Uh, was old school All Star back in a different format. It just comes into play. You get to uh, Helix them, gain some life, put out a four five, which in Legacy very hard to kill outside of that Revolted Fatal Push. Mm -hmm. My which, lightning bolt. Yeah, well, she's <coughs> double lightning bolt actually. Shoot, you need a double bolt this guy. But I think we're pretty fine with seeing this thing hit eat two bolts because if that's the case, that means we save six and mm -hmm. we've already gained three. So that's pretty much three spells out of their hand that we've mm -hmm. had to deal with. And he puts a nice clock on with Trample. True Name Nemesis can't really block this thing very well. Tokens from Young Pyromancer don't block it very efficiently. So the, this is pretty much going to get through most of the time. So a True Name and a Trample, the, um, the, yeah, the, the four, three damage goes over. Right? Oh yeah, three damage goes right over. Even though the True Name doesn't die, neither does a Siege Rhino. But they still take three damage, which mm -hmm. is very nice as a way to start keep clocking them and keep pressure on them. Because if they're taking three each turn, if they start attacking with that True Name and have nothing back, then they start taking four. And we our clock gets a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. We shave a few turns off that. You know, you got here. This this card's you know a little you know, issue, maybe maybe an issue game one for certain decks, but we got it's you know some people don't like with Green Sun Zenith and the main board because you can't cast X spells. But the games you're gonna want Gaddick Teague out are the games you're gonna need him out against Storm Miracles. You can Green Sun Zenith him out. They're gonna have a hard time playing Jace Terminus. Supreme Verdict if they've got it, but they've got to deal with Gaddick before they can start playing any of those big spells from their deck, which they are so known for. They ha they'll just keep can tripping and spinning their wheels where we can just you know keep getting in. But mm -hmm. you know, if they have sorts of postures, you know we lose Gaddick Teague, not the end of the world there. Sometimes it's you know not the worst thing, but mm -hmm. we still we save our board with Gaddick 
not being able to have terminus out so we we can produce creatures but not enough to be overextend and he gets swords and then they terminus and then we're just down everything but we can play a little bit better we can play this and maybe one c drino and just keep attacking but again if they put our creatures back in our deck and we have green sun zenith we just get them back out anyway so mm -hmm. <coughs> it's nice so the only way really way to do that is just you know exile gaddock and then we can still access the rest of our deck which is very helpful and we got here we got here a little i guess you know fun little comp three card combo here We've got Excavator, Corsair of Crufix, and Sylvan Library. Sylvan Library is nice to help us sort out the top of our deck late game. We don't want to draw into some of our lands. Unless, however, we have this nice Corsair of Crufix, and we want to gain some life, and we can adjust the top of our deck to draw very, draw one card, keep a land on top, so we basically were drawing two cards a turn if we want to do that. So we gain life off that. We get value from Sylvan Library by filtering the top three, and we get a card we want in our hand, and we get to thin our deck out even more, which is pretty helpful against some certain decks we need to grind with. And then we have Excavator, Corsair, just, you know, the nice ability to play cards out of our graveyard, like Ghost Quarter, which is very nice because, again, we're pressuring our opponent's basic lands. The more we can Ghost Quarter our opponent, the quicker Ghost Quarter becomes Strip Mine. Mm -hmm. And if we can keep Strip Mining our opponent every turn, and maybe gaining life off it, not 100% necessity, but if we can keep Strip Mining our opponent soon, they're not going to have any lands and not be able to play anything. Yeah, and in Legacy, it's going to be very easy to Strip Mine them out because they're not going to have a lot of basics in their decks, usually. Mm -hmm. So this is a very powerful um, piece to the deck. <clears throat> it's a way for us to get to the late game where even if we don't have the most threats on the board, if we can keep them off threats and keep them off spells, it's a great way to you know, show, show yeah, up a win You can there. totally lock them out. Yeah, we can lock them off a color very easily with mm -hmm. Ghost Quarter. All right. So we get those there. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, we just got the little the, the creature land, the Dryad Arbor, the thing we need the uh, necessity of another one of the necessities mm -hmm. of the deck we don't count it as a land we count it as a creature because a green sun zenith it just gets us there but it does ramp but we got to worry about this sometimes in pernicious deed because we all blow up our own draw we may mm -hmm. blow up our own dried arbor sometimes so if you're going to activate deed just activate the arbor mm -hmm. for mana first so you don't accidentally waste that so we just well, go down turn one play is um, green, green sun, sun for this guy right if you have green sun in your hand <coughs> and you can get dryad arbor mm -hmm. most of the time you're going to get you're going to want to get dryad arbor mm -hmm. CMC zero people. Oh yeah, CMC zero is very powerful. It's the only one, only green and CMC zero that's created, I believe. CMC zero for green. Uh, creature wise, probably. Creature wise, yeah, no. definitely. All right, and now we're gonna get into some of the some of the larger portions of the deck. I'm gonna go ahead and scoop these up here to the middle of the frame. We're gonna go ahead and talk about some of the more well known cards like Marin of Clan Telna. This guy, oh, Marin does everything we want. Recursion <laughs> gets us some creatures back from our graveyard. And like I said earlier, maybe we get rid of that. They kill that Dryad Arbor. Even if we have no experience counters. The CMC on Dryad Arbor is zero, so we can just put the Dryad Arbor back into play. Keep it as a blocker. And if it dies, we get experience counters. But it's a nice way to get back a land out of your graveyard, get back a creature, something to block with, a way to, you know, maybe posthumously ramp the Dryad Arbor. Mm. It's just very nice. And then later, if we get those experience counters, we get the counters, not the creature. So even if Marin dies, we still have the counters. So if we get somehow get Marin back through all of our through maybe Eternal Witness. Mm -hmm. We get that back, or some of the other cards we're going to talk about in a second. We don't have to start, all we don't have to start at zero again. We, just, we yeah. just play her. She's at four. Oh, hey, I'm going to get back a Corsair Crufix. I'm going to get back that Siege Rhino from my graveyard that died earlier. We get all sorts of value off Marin that she's one of the main creature engines of the deck just to keep getting things back. Plus, four toughness means doesn't die to Bolt, which is very, very helpful in this meta. Mm -hmm. And then we got... We here have Leobald... <coughs> It's this is mostly an Abzan deck. We splash blue for one card for one Leovol. We got one Trop in here for Leovol in case we need to hard cast him. Most of the time we're gonna get him off of our Green Sun Zenith that just stops so many different Cantrip decks. Decks with spot removal like Grixis Control. We have so much spot removal. Push Bolt Call Against Command. They just it just stops all that and we just draw so many cards. We just mm -hmm. start getting ahead. Mm -hmm. Either two for ones become one two for two. Like mm -hmm. we get they get two cards. We get two cards. We just start drawing cards, and if Leovold dies again, there there's so many ways to get him back. Mm -hmm. It's just very it's, easy. Yeah, to this keep... card is so good; it necessitates putting a whole single dual land in the deck just for him. Yeah, and it's easy to get the dual land because we can hit him off basically every single fetch, but the one Marsh last we've got, we can hit it off all that. And if somehow they wasteland our Volcanic Island, like I said, there are ways to get things out of our graveyard in this deck. Mm -hmm. You can also Green Sun for him. Again. Oh yeah, you Green know, Sun so. is the main reason we're going to get that out. We don't actually, unless we have him in our hand, we don't actively fetch for this this mm -hmm. tropical island ever. It's just a way to keep it in again. So, you know, just, just against Wasteland. Yep. Just in case we draw it, mm -hmm. we don't get it off the Green Sun. We don't get a Green Sun, we draw him, and we can fetch for that vault, the uh, Trop and then play him. Mm -hmm. Next up, the last, the major beater in the deck is Sigarda. Mainly there to help protect against Emrakul. She comes in, they play Sneak and Show. You put this out, they put Emrakul out. 
you don't have to worry too much about sacrificing your permanence. Plus, I mean, sometimes you might even be over 20 life. So taking 15 the first time, you're not necessarily going to die, but you've probably whittled them down maybe a little bit. And having a 5-5 beater in the air helps if they attack with Emrakul. Cool. You take 15. Next turn, you can attack for maybe 7 or 8 back. Then you can keep her back to block if you need to. And then maybe after that, you can swing through. But this is it's in the case of them playing Emrakul cool out and maybe not sneak attack. Mm -hmm. So it's just just a nice way to hedge that. Plus, flying and hexproof. If you can, if you land this against any deck with a ton of removal that's targeted, she's gonna live. She's gonna be able to block everything they've got minus baleful Strix, because yay, they created a two mana flying death touch creature. That cantrips. <laughs> <laughs> she can pretty much block everything there, and she's a great clock in the air. She's a four turn clock, maybe even less depending on what we've played already in the game. If we fit with anything, she's a great clock in the air. She can go right through a Vendillion click if we need to. Mm -hmm. And there, there is an uptick of Liliana's Triumph being floated around now, and that's another hedge against that. The yeah, hedge is great, great against Edix, but the decks that are playing themselves probably going to take out Edix, because if we have Ener Explorer out, that's the first thing we're going to sacrifice actively. We're going to be <laughs> like, okay, we'll just sacrifice our Ener Explorer, let's ramp a little bit, mm -hmm. maybe thin our deck some. Next up is Titania, another another nice tool of the deck. Just, you know, 5-3 beater, but when you get her, you grab a land out of your graveyard, any land you want. You can grab a fetch land, you can grab a Phyrexian Tower, that Ghost Quarterback if you want to. The Ghost Quarter is probably one of the bigger ones we want to get back in this variant. You know, start pitching, hitting more of their lands, trying to thin them out some... Not thin them out, but you know, just kill their lands off. And then when we, when we sack that Ghost Quarter, you know, nice little incentive to get a 5-3 green elemental. So she does get value. She gets a land back, and we get some, you know, some value off the land. And then we get a 5-3 T, 5-3 creature, which... Can block Gurmag Angler or any large creature pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. Now it's pretty easy to get a bunch of oh, five yeah. three tokens out with her. Oh right? yeah, we have fetch. If we have Ramen up Excavator and Titania out, it's mm -hmm. very easy to get a whole bunch of fetch lands and just start making five threes and just start clocking the opponent. Even if we get one or two tokens, it's definitely got more than her value because we've got one creature left behind. Even if they kill it, so it's like one and a half for one. We're mm -hmm. gonna say if they kill us with Bolt, but three toughness, minor liability, but they're gonna have to you know play for that. Mm -hmm. But we do get, like I said, we do get that land back immediately, so even if they kill it before we get that trigger resolving, we still get a land back, so we still get something out of it. It's not like we lose it for nothing. It's a great Green Sun Zenith target, so it just catches people out of nowhere. Just, you know, if they're tapped out, we Green Sun for this, get some lands. Mm -hmm. and we get, here we got Diabolic Intent. This card, you know, Demonic, you know, Demonic Tutor's fun. Get a card out of your deck, but being able to sacrifice a creature like Veteran Explorer and get three cards out of your deck, two of them just go straight to the battlefield untapped to use later, Pretty nice Only to be for able two. to... For two mana. Yeah, two mana, sack a creature. Sack a creature in this deck is never a downside because it gives you experience caverns with Marin. You get your land. You know, you can sack a creature that's maybe not doing anything actively. Like, you know, maybe we want to put that Eternal Witness in the graveyard to get it back later with some recursion mm -hmm. so we can do that. So you just put certain small things. Or if maybe Gaddick Teague's not doing anything, they've, you know, you're playing against a deck that, you know, doesn't care about Gaddick Teague at all. You're playing against Burn. You can just intent Gaddick Teague, maybe grab that Siege Rhino, gain some life, or... Grab something else. Maybe we're playing post sideboard. We've got a few cards that gain us life there, so that'll be helpful. Or we can go grab Soren, which is another. This is it's kind of a new addition from War of the Spark. I really I seem to like this. It's a great. It's a value card. We don't use him mainly for his plus ability. He's nice because if opponents have Narset on one, which sometimes they're gonna have Narset just stuck at one, that first ability to deal plus two to deal one damage to any player Planeswalker just takes Narset right off the board, which is very very nice. Or you can start whittling down Jace, or if you want, just start pinging your opponent if you need to. If they're not doing anything, you just start taking whittling them down just a little bit. It doesn't do much, mm -hmm. but the static is, as long as it's my turn or your turn, creatures and planeswalkers you control have lifelink. So lifelink in this deck, very, very relevant. We do tend to hurt ourselves a little bit with our fetch land base, and we may take some early damage against Burn or a lot of other decks like Blue Red Delver may start burning us out. Having that lifelink and having a couple creatures out and swinging can gain us, you know... A, Shoot, depends on what we have about four, eight, ten life, just to get us out of range mm -hmm. of any of those decks. But the main ability we like on Soren, minus X, return target creature with converted mana cost X or less from our graveyard. It's a vampire, but yeah, we, we, the creature types in this deck don't really matter too much, so vampire is not relevant unless they have a non-vampire removal spell mm -hmm. in their deck. But starting at four means we can pretty much get everything out of our, almost anything out of our graveyard, but a main beater, which means we can get back. I mean, even if you want to, you can minus for zero and get back your Dryad Arbor, which is mm -hmm. great. So you keep that at four, and you have a Dryad Arbor as a blocker for this. So keep that up if they have one creature out. Mm -hmm. Or you can get back a Veteran Explorer if you want some, maybe some, need some lands back out. Mm -hmm. 
you get back your eternal witness. Hey, another way to get that back out and get some value mm -hmm. and more value out of that card. We can even we can even get rid of this if completely if we haven't plus it. Get back Marin, mm -hmm. and if we have some experience counters, we can start getting creatures back out of our graveyard. So with the explorer, I mean that's just crazy because you can ping your explorer, right? Uh -huh. Get rid of him. Get no, it's, lands. it's player planeswalker. It's not player, creature. Oh, oh, okay, that would sorry, be that would be yes, way yes, yeah. too good. <laughs> We'll talk about how to do that in a second, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, not off Soren. Soren's great if you need to, like, if, you know, Jace may be sitting at one or two, if it's bounced one of your creatures, you can start pinging it down, so it's not so threatening anymore, and Miracles doesn't put up the fastest clock, so Soren ticking down Jace is pretty helpful. Mm -hmm. They may start having to fate seal you for that, which means you might be able to hit them, because mm -hmm. they're not brainstorming, so they don't have as much value out of that Jace anymore. Mm -hmm. But just being able to reanimate multiple creatures on this card, and those creatures then have lifelink if they can attack, is just so much good value off this. Have I mentioned this deck is all about value? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Next up, we got the second Planeswalker in the deck, Liliana the Last Hope. Just all around all star, an unbeatable emblem. You just start getting zombies. There's no way for them to win. There's no way for them to get through that horde unless you're so low they burn you out. Just starting with two zombies and just keep going from there. Is, it's a clock most decks can't deal with. But then again, we have this plus one ability, which is you know, great against decks like Death and Taxes, or Delver to kill a young Pyromancer, or an unflipped Delver. You can kill Thalia, Mother of Ruins. Well, probably not Mother of Ruins. If they have Mother of Ruins yeah, out... A, turn one. Yeah. yeah, turn one. Yeah, if you get this right out against, you know, right here against them, but kill a Flicker Wisp, or kill something if they don't have Mom out is great, or Infect just to kill, you know, just to kill anything almost an Infect. Kill their Noble Hierarchs, they don't have Exalted anymore. Just be rid of a whole bunch of little good stuff there. But there's also a hidden mode to that plus one. If we have Veteran Explorer out, we can kill our own Veteran Explorer and get some lands. <laughs> this, deck, this deck loves killing Veteran Explorer. That guy just loves exploring <laughs> the graveyard. <laughs> he just goes to the graveyard, we get some lands out. But we do have to be mindful of how many basics we have. After after we get all those basics, Veteran Explorer holds no value anymore for us. It's a great blocker. Fine. It's great blocks like a champ. <laughs> but then we got to worry about if we're playing against Burn, Death and Taxes, things that do play a decent amount of basics. We may want to worry about how many of those we put out on the battlefield, but... But having just having Liliana out and just you know making sure their creatures can't swing through is just great. Mm -hmm. And if we need to, like I said, more recursion. We get that minus two to mill two from our graveyard. And if we have a creature we want, we just get it back to our hand, mm -hmm. which you know we can get back that nice eternal witness, mm -hmm. which is is greater. Get back anything we want. Get back any creature we want from the graveyard. There's just so much way to gain incremental incrementally ahead against your opponent in this deck. It's just helpful, and we don't. Sometimes we don't mind if Liliana dies. She's great. If she got a creature back to her hand, she's already refilled. If she killed a creature, she's already gotten her value there. If she can live to her emblem, perfect. Mm -hmm. We're probably gonna win that game. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, David, and now we got the last card. We got my. Uh, this is a David Salas this special. Is this is a pet card of mine. <laughs> this is a big we got, frog. We got a very very big frog. We got the Gitrog <laughs> monster here. This this card when this comes out, most of the time, we may just people may be confused. They look at it and be like, why? <laughs> but if they can't deal with this thing. And you get to untap, or if you have any fetch land out in your, if you have fetch land in your hand when you play this guy, you get him out. Mm -hmm. Instant value. You get extra land drops, which this deck has a lot of lands, a lot of ways to grab lands. You play those lands. So what is this if, guy now? He's a, a six six a six death, six death touch and and at the beginning of upkeep we have to sack a land or have to sacrifice him, but not a big deal because we've been ramping a lot in the deck, so we have a couple extra lands out, and I get to play an additional land if I when I have him out. So it's great if I have a couple fetch lands. I play those, crack those, and his last ability says, when any lands go from the graveyard to anywhere, draw a card. My grave, my anywhere, into my graveyard, I get to draw a card. So if we minus two Liliana and two, two lands in the graveyard, after her ability resolves, we get to draw two more cards. You so, can minus one your Dryad Arbor. I get, the right? plus one that, I get plus one to kill my Dryad Arbor yeah. to draw a card if yeah. I need to. There's just so many <laughs> little, little tiny interactions in this deck that if you're not looking for, may pass you up. We went through that whole uh, last stream, if you were there watching. We went over the whole Liliana killing our Veteran Explorer, and because the opponent was like, oh, I guess I didn't ever realize you could do that, if because I had so many other creatures. I killed the Veteran Explorer and got some more lands and played more things. And also, this guy blocks uh, zombie fish very, very well. He eats zombie fish for breakfast, because yes, five fives into a 6-6 six, six with that touch. Actually, that's a Gurmag Angler Tail, is what that is right there. <laughs> uh, so, it's like yes. a zombie arm. <laughs> yeah, it's close enough, but yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, you know, also we can green sun zenith for him, but most of the time, I mean, he's he's great to play. He finishes games very, very well. He just gets us so far ahead if the opponents can't deal with him. Plus, if we have that ramming up excavator that we talked about earlier in play, we get to play all those fetch lines from our graveyard. We may not have anything, but we can start drawing cards at the cost of one life. Hmm. Oh, but if we have, you know, if, you know, even if we have Corsair out, we're cracking fetches without the ramming up. We just, you know, net neutral or net plus one on our life total and draw some cards, thin our deck. Mm -hmm. If we happen to not like what's on top because we can see it with that Corsair. There's just so many ways this thing gets value. Plus, I had to have someone 
Deluge for six because they could not deal with this card. <laughs> they had to get rid of some of their own creatures to deal with our Getrog monster. But enough about that. <coughs> James Buckingham. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but yeah, just enough about... Like, the land base is pretty straightforward. We got six basics here. We got three forests, two swamps, and a plains. Just pretty much... We had the plains in there for Soren, for... Path to Exile for Siege Rhino, just in case we need to get that. Probably not the first touch line we're going to get unless we have one of those white cards in our hand. Forests and Swamps are a little more prevalent in the deck to use. Just a lot more blue, black and green things to do than white. Yeah, we got Ghost Quarter. We talked about that as a, as a pseudo strip mine eventually. We have Frexian Tower here. We can sack, sacking our creatures always gains us extra value. We play our Explorer on turn one, we crack Frexian Tower into that, but. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to go ahead and go through these just pretty quickly. Just, you know, basic fetch lands, the green, white, and black fetches. And then we've got a couple other more non-basics here for us. Just a couple dual lands with the one volcan the one tropical island. And now we're just going to do a like, quick little like minute or two on our sideboard. Just, you know, Garrick against creature decks to fight or putting out two two wolves to block. Flip them over. We get to sacrifice our creatures to tutor up a creature. Get to worldly tutor a creature to our hand. Or eventually, if we have enough creatures in our graveyard, we can just overrun, or maybe we can put out Death Touch Wolves to block their creatures to mm -hmm, protect mm -hmm. ourselves a little bit better. So wait, you only have two Leyline of the Voids in this Yeah, build? we got two Leylines. Uh, we're, eh, we're testing out the new Mulligan rule. We're testing out the London Mulligan, which means, you know, because we draw seven cards every single time, we don't have to worry about putting four of nece necessary cards in our sideboard. We can put two in and have a greater chance to draw it every time because we're going to keep drawing seven cards even though we have to put stuff back. Seeing seven multiple times means there's a greater chance of hitting one of two ley lines. Mm -hmm. So that's two slide, uh, sideboard slots opened up because of the London Mulligan. Yeah, rule. and that doesn't affect just this deck. It affects every deck that has a four of Leyline of Sanctity or Leyline of the Void mm -hmm. or something, some specific hate card that you definitely need. It allows you a better chance to get it. Mm -hmm. You just got Thrag Tusk here, gain some life, make a couple creatures if we need to against just decks that are going to Wrath, maybe against Miracle, so we get that beast afterwards. <laughs> and when it leaves the battlefield, even if they swords it, we get the beast because it says leaves the battlefield, doesn't say dies. Mr. Swag Tusk himself. Yes, sir. And we get Knight of Autumn, great to gain life. Playing its burn or blow up artifacts or enchantments in place. We're playing its enchantress, or in case we're playing, you know, pretty much like Still Stompy or something like that, just to get rid of one of their key pieces. We can blow up a chalice if it's on one because we have so many one drops in that deck. I've learned about mm -hmm. <laughs> that hurt me. And just some abrupt decays against the Delver decks or control decks to blow up things if we need to blow up a. Pretty much just get rid of Delver mostly. Mm -hmm. Two Lilianus Triumphs, nice edicts. Maybe get rid of a True Name or a Death Shadow that's bugging us or. Merit Lage, because mm -hmm. we we have a couple paths, but it's nice to shore up a couple more edicts in the deck. Mm -hmm. Our kind of Valor's Reach, if we can get this thing off a of Green Sun or cast it early enough, we just cut someone off of one of their key cards, like Storm. They can't cast Sorceries if we somehow get this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna do we're gonna do that pretty soon. Yeah, well, let's go ahead and just go ahead and go to some of the games. We got choke. Go, yeah, go through. We got choke against Islands. And to the slaughter, it's another edict effect we can bring in if they have just straight up planes. Walkers. Oh, what is this? I haven't seen this. What and is just that? recurring nightmare. Like I said, more value. Just re starting reanimating creatures at our graveyard by sacking and just keep replacing things from our graveyard and our field. Okay. Yep. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Sorry about that long intro, but there are a lot of cards to go over with Nick Fit. So I think gonna... a lot of people are gonna appreciate the uh, deck pick. Um, yeah. So. Nick Fit is one of those decks that takes uh, a, a while. Very to... cool deck, but it doesn't necessarily get a lot of attention because. You know, it's not your blue white stone blade. It's not your miracles or the inherent you know. power is not an individual value. It's how well the cards work together. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just taking time out for decks like this, I think, is going to be really well received. So, mm -hmm. we're glad to do it. And yeah. I love the deck. I mean, I built it, and I have no idea how to play it, which is why I have a galaxy brain here, so <laughs> can right. play it much better than me. So. All right. So yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, well, like I said, let's just. No, we took care of that. So we're going to go ahead and get started here with Nick Fit versus Blue Black Death Shadow. Yeah. So I have no idea how this matchup is going to go, so that's going to be fun. Yeah, maybe if you go to 3 life, I land Siege Rhino, you just die, maybe. We'll see how it happens <laughs> there, right? All right, I'm just going to go quick. All right, well. Yep. Oh, we're going to do London Mulligan tonight. And we're going to also, yeah, like I said, we're testing out London Mulligan. Yeah, so. don't forget. So I will forget. I will draw six cards and try to scry. And if anybody wants to see any deck against uh, Death Sh uh, against Nick Fit that we happen to have in our library tonight, mm -hmm. be more than happy to take suggestions. Sorry about the long-winded explanations there, but no way. I think, they're it's, great I think cards. it's needed. I think it's good. Yeah, it's just one of those singleton decks that every card has some specific value and purpose. Mm-hmm. 
I gotta shuffle this really well because it was sorted. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> Unless I want to win, then yeah, don't don't shuffle too much. Jeez. Start off with the high roll, like always. Do you want to yep. grab a couple sixes here and ten? All right, Jesus, good roll. I guess you want to go first, huh? I definitely want to go first. It's, <laughs> it's my night. All right, all right. So let's go ahead. Let's see what do I got here. Hmm, this is a strange opening hand for Death Shadow. Um, um, I can keep this hand. This hand seems pretty good. I honestly don't think I want this. I'm gonna mull. Okay. Wait, I'm gonna I'm gonna London mull. You're gonna again. London right, mull. Let's fill them all again, but don't forget, no scrying. Right. That's right. No scrying. Seven no. cards again. Seven cards again. Yep. <clears throat> there you go. This feels so weird drawing seven cards again. It's against. It helps with this feel bad. It's like, oh, ju oh, judge. He accidentally drew seven on his mull again. That's fine now. Just make sure to put the red nine cards back. Um. Believe it or not, I think I'm going to put this on the bottom. All right. All right, let's go. Let's go. I'm going to start off with a veteran explorer. Is he mm -hmm. good? He's good? Yep. That's you. Go ahead. Go. Jeez. All right. We're going to crack catacombs. Since we know this is a nice little wasteland deck, let's go ahead and grab... Go ahead and grab a buy. Well, go ahead and grab that basic swamp plant. Shuffle that a few times. Back you go. Whoosh! <laughs> Alright, so first thing we're going to do is. Cabal therapy. I'm going to fetch in response. Alright. Don't forget people. Don't name anything yet. Huh. Uh, I'm gonna ground sea. Ooh, that's that's good. It's interesting that you don't want to take some life. There's no reason to. Not yet, I guess, maybe. Brainstorm? Sure. Oh well, let's one, two, three. So this <coughs> it's not just no, at least in the top in his hand he didn't have probably have a man have a counter spell. Or he has days and we played around that pretty nicely, I guess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put those two back. All right. That this resolves. resolves. Oh, I'm gonna name. Is it engineering that? Because we've already done that. I will name. Let's do Force of Will just to make sure we do it. Let's just do a Force check. Maybe Force of Will? Okay. Oh, you have two Street Wraith, Days, Reanimate. Okay. Alright, I'm gonna, you might as well just keep that on. I'm gonna sack this and name. Okay. Oh, I'm gonna sack this. Do you have any response? Uh, first, we get a trigger here. And okay. then. And then. Well, that trigger's on the stack. I'm gonna cycle Street Wraith. Okay. Cycle Street Wraith. Okay. So I'm gonna lose four. And draw two cards. And draw two. All right, so we still have this on the stack. Does the trigger here from this veteran dying resolve? Mm -hmm. Sorry, this is not exiled, but all right, so that resolves. Okay. I'm gonna get that other swamp because we have some double black we want to cast eventually. Not that. I am going to fail to find off of that veteran explorer trigger. I don't play any basics in this deck. Depending on how how you play it, there may be an much, island in there. How much but... Nick Fit appears in the meta will determine <laughs> that shadow. <laughs> it's not Nick Fit. It's more of an Assassin's Trophy. We're gonna just do that. This is true. This uh, is true. Yeah. Let's see. Since we have so far had on lands, we don't have to really have to worry too much about that daze you've got because we can always just leave that extra mana. We're gonna take uh, Reanimate. Okay. 
Because we do have swamps, yeah. So the animates a goodie. Okay, so let me just see. And then, until you brainstorm, do I just, uh, I guess, try to think. Try to think, is there anything else here? So you do have days, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop another veteran explorer. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I know, I believe I forgot to attack, though. That was my you, mistake there. I did forget did. to get in for one damage there. But I'm gonna go ahead and pass it to you after that. Yeah, good turn. I'll go ahead and thought seize you. Lose two. Alright, so you got land, tracker, and cigarda. Um, oh, you know what? Apologize, one last little piece of technical difficulties. Yeah, Stream, deck. Stream deck is just acting up a little bit. No, it's user error. I didn't turn on the things I was supposed to turn on. Fair enough. Alright, so what, I think, what's my life at so far? You have lost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 life total. So this would be 7, so you'd be at 13. Okay, that's running. Okay, so it's at 13 right now, right? Yes, okay. okay so so Thoughtseize get... resolves. Um, I am going to take the tireless tracker. Alright, tracker is in the graveyard. Um... No. Go ahead. Okay, and we're gonna draw. Draw uh, one. Mm-hmm. Please one. Go. Sometimes the clock doesn't, the deck doesn't put a clock out, but... I'm gonna fetch. And there are reasons Please to one. keep this. I didn't. I didn't play the planes because we do have other tireless trackers, so we may want to just oh, keep the two. value. And there's no other. There's no extra incentive otherwise. Go to turn draw. Uh huh. Hmm. I play one shadow. Shadow is at four, okay. Um I don't think I dropped a lane yet. No, I did. You no, did that not. Was that was last turn. Yeah, that was last turn. Uh, go ahead. Alright. Alright, and then here's another I guess trying to get brings on. I'm gonna do that right now. Yeah, I'll do that now. Just uh Assassin's Trophy Death Shadow. I could assassin's trophy one of his lands, but he has days to pick it up anyway, so there's no point in doing that. And I know he doesn't have basics. I'm gonna brainstorm. Sure. Uh, Those two back like that. All right, perfect. Uh, that resolves. That resolves. All right, you may search for your basic. Search for a basic. <laughs> I'm going to search and fail to find. So I put back things that I don't want to draw. But I did give him a shuffle. But I got rid of Death Shadow, which is almost zero drawback. So you know, that seems fair for me. All right, and Go ahead. my turn. All right, draw. And I guess yeah, we'll play the planes now, just because. Yeah, we'll just take. Because we know we have it. <coughs> and Pernicious Deed. Mm-hmm. Go. I should be drawing a creature or something soon. I mean, I've got spells. <laughs> the nice thing about Deed is... Cycle Street. Right? Yeah, go for it. It was too late. The nice thing about Deed is he has no way to interact with that main deck, so this is just going to stick here and most of his threats are going to go away. Nah, the Angler is kind of, kind of a threat, but I can just leave Explorer back. Three, four, five, six. Six, alright. Six cards. Six, leave these four creatures in the graveyard. Nah, for me to eat later with that card, that's good. Um... 
This was the brainstorm that I had in the... Yep. All right, I don't... Okay. Yeah, you only cast. You could. I did. This is the one I cast this turn, right? Yeah, and there's or, two brainstorms. There's yeah, two we brainstorms. have two brainstorms. Okay, we're yes, good. Yes. Yeah, we're good. Okay, we're good. good. Um. Anything else? Let's see if I can force your hand here. Death shadow. Okay, that's the nice little four four. So God, it's a big death shadow. It's a seven seven. All right. Go ahead. All right. Let's see what we got here. Oof. Um. Hmm. All right, so here's going to be the fun part. Rexine Tower. Sure. Sac. Okay. Add float two. I have two black, and I get to fetch. Okay. For some lands. Here's a nice little fun part of this deck. I think I have one more base deck left in the deck after that. My little guys become functionally... No, I think that's, no, I I think have, that's it, actually. No, I have uh, three fours in the deck. You do. I yeah, that's right. I think I must have missed it on the first run through. There it is, whiteboarded. Should be easy to find, it's whiteboarded. <laughs> it's and one of the reasons the... why I make the basics whiteboarded. Alright, so I got two black in the pool. <clears throat> Plus five. Seven mana blow up deed. Mm -hmm. And that destroys both of the creatures. And just shows you how good deed is. Pass to you. Alright, so you have three cards in your hand after that draw? Yes. Alright. I'm gonna waste the... Aw, oh, man. I can't do that again. <laughs> Although I've got enough lands, I think go I'm ahead. fine. You got one card in here? Yep, one card. Oh. And I'm gonna go ahead and fetch with this Roden Catacombs. Okay. I'm gonna go grab a land that's probably not long for this world, but that's fine by me. Yeah. I grab a Savannah. Okay. I don't even know if this is going to resolve. You have two cards in your hand, so this is four so well. This is going to stink. Five. The cigar you've known about for the entire game. I'm brainstorm. Okay. Hmm. Which, if this resolves, is going to put a very nice clock on my Death Shadow player here. He's going to be, you know... Unable to fetch. Unable to... God damn it. <laughs> I wish I had one more card, people. I had just one more card. Days um, and days. Well, days and days don't work. So I'm going to... Uh, I don't have a fetch either. I'm going to put these two back. All right. Um, I'm going to try to daze it. I'll pay this nice green mana here to, to, counter, to pay for that daze. Try to daze it. Oh, let's pay this swamp here. <laughs> yeah. All right, go. <laughs> Draw days. <laughs> That's why I wish I had one more. Go ahead. All right. Draw. Kill you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was at six, but yeah. yeah I, I mean, you know couldn't that. fetch or do anything yeah, after that anyway. You couldn't that. cycle your street race. You couldn't do anything. All right. So let's go ahead and sideboard. God. If only I had one more card in yeah, my hand. I could have dazed you three no, you could. No, you couldn't have. You'd have oh, that's right. I need, I need one have more. three islands. I need one more. <laughs> islands, right. Yeah. No, if those two were untapped, pay, pay, tap two. Days. Days. Wait, sh wait days. should I? Well, I, even if I hard cast a days, I still would not have been able to. No, you could get three days. You could get three days. Yeah, that's right. God damn it. That's fun. All right, game two. Let's take it some cards. We don't think we're gonna. Let me add the. Uh, well, I I did uh, keep a wasteland in hand, and I put one out to deal with the. Um, what was that? The stronghold or whatever. Yeah. It was? This card doesn't. Eh, this card's fine, but it doesn't really do anything. Also, one last thing I forgot to mention about the Gitorg monster: it can't be dismembered either. Maybe play Oasis and don't do anything. Well, I mean, he's got well. That's what choice. I was saying. I, I kept a wasteland <laughs> in my hand, um, and I, I did play one to deal with the. Uh, uh, what is it called? Volrath Stronghold? Volrath Stronghold. Yeah. Oh, for, no, it's Phyrexian Tower. Oh, yeah. I can just figure Stronghold. Does something else, yeah. Alright, let's see. Cyborg. I don't know. I've never played this matchup before, so I'm not sure. The cyborg. So. That's a no. I I that's a good one. I gotta bring, I'm gonna bring those in. Just... That's a good one. 
These cards you think are good, but he doesn't really have enough to. I mean, yeah, it hurt. But... These are bad. Edicts and fine. Oh, no, I'd rather have. I can do edicts because I can just do a little later. This might be worth bringing in. I'm gonna bring the dark test. I'm just trying to see what I can do. Actually, maybe uh, it's better. I think that's what I want. Yeah, what about cards are gonna be too slow? Let's try these. Hmm, it might be too slow. I know something like this card's. Seems fine with some slow cards. I don't think I like those. There's only one single. It's gonna help us really like you know, it's just very really good to keep blocked in the battlefield. I don't think I like that. Or do I? Hmm. I don't think I like this. I guess that's a choice. I don't think I need all those. Just a couple pockets. I gotta take one more out. Um, you don't wanna I'll have to worry too much about out. keeping multiple things alive. So I'm taking these out. And like I said, this is one of those matchups where Ghost Quarter is just strip mine. Yeah, Ghost Quarter is going to be brutal against me. I'm going to take this out because it's just too slow. And it can be kind of weak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems good. Mm -hmm. Your deck plays so little land if I start destroying all your lands. It's gonna be hard for you to catch up. Yes. Very, very hard. I will be on the play. Right. I mean, you did everything pretty much right. Just pernicious. It showed how good Pernicious Deed was that game. And how good Assassin's Trophy can also be in the right instances. Alrighty. Go ahead and shuffle that up. Cool. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. This was also helpful. I could kill my veteran explorer pretty easily in that game as well. Um, hmm. Yeah, actually, this was a good hand. This is five lands. <laughs> Something I don't really want to have in my hand. So this, 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 this. Okay, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. All right. Cool. Just go ahead and. Shuffles and cut it a couple times and riffle a little bit. Alright. So let's draw seven again. Don't forget the London Mulligan. Yeah, I know. Seven. Alright, let's see what do I got here. God, this thing doesn't seem awful. But it doesn't do anything. Um. It does, it does, however, buy me plenty of time. Um, you know that. Where do I want to put it at the bottom of the deck? I'm going to put this at the bottom because I don't have anything to do with it right now and I don't feel like, you know, keeping it. Go for it. Uh, fetch. Yeah. And since he's playing permanent base decks. I'm going to lose three. Play uh, seems fine. Go ahead. Draw. Play the forest and say go. Trigger. You got it. No blank stuff, maybe. Hmm.
still my upkeep, right? Even when I look at this? Yeah, it's still your upkeep. You can do stuff after that. So I'm going to Street Wraith. Okay. Draw a card. Yep. So you're at uh, 15 life now. And... Draw for the turn. That's... Yeah, no, that's your... You draw for the turn. You resolve that trigger already. I did. Off of that. Okay, yeah. Okay. So I see an unnecessary thought seed. So you just draw the thought seed for your turn now. Yes. Yes. Because you resolve okay. that. You didn't like it. Yeah. So it doesn't flip. Oh, that's it right. doesn't yeah, flip. Yeah. It doesn't yep, flip. Yep, yep. Um. Sorry for one. Ow. That hurt just a little bit. Cycle again. Cycle again. All right. Cool. Why is this tapped? Because you. You they didn't do anything with it, so it shouldn't be tapped. That's right. You tapped uh, it and cycled Street Wraith for some reason. Oh, uh, sure. thoughts you. Yeah. Okay, so I get this Bayou, I get this Word and Catacombs, right, and I got uh, these cards there. right here. Um, I will take the D. I don't know. Yeah, I'll take the deed. Deed's gone. Yep. All Go right. ahead. Deed's gone. You're at 19. Cool. Yep. Sure. Yeah, my guess. Trigger. Sure. Huh, that's good. Troll. Um. Swing three. I'm gonna cycle this guy again. That's three. Jesus. Troll one. Yeah, sure. Okay, he's a 4 4. Let's see. How many cards do you have? 5? Mm -hmm. some my turn because I don't want him drawing an extra card. Assassin's Trophy Insect Celebration. I want to see you draw this. Have you seen another card before this resolves? Try to daze it. I'm going to fetch a response <coughs> to okay. daze. So I lose one. Okay, that happens. That happens? Okay, cool. Alright, and Delver is dead. So I'm going to fetch out a basic swamp. And pay that. I'm done after that. Draw. Mm -hmm. Lose two life. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, ponder. Okay, draw a card. Alright. It's my land for the turn, right? Yeah, you play that and tap it, yep. Swing six. Block. Mm -hmm. Trigger? Yep. Alright. You got three cards here? Three cards in my hand, yes. <coughs> Go. Since you, since you burned the days. Try. Mm -hmm. Alright. Alright, draw. Pass. Uh, that's a German gangler. Two, 
five, six. Mm -hmm. Play up the turn. Take uh -huh. two. Take two. All right. You're five, all right? Um. Hmm. Go ahead. Uh, end of your turn, I'm going to triumph you. Triumph. I'm going to brainstorm. Uh huh. While it's on the stack. Yeah, sure. Nice to see a ton of removal. I wonder where my force of wheels are. <laughs> <laughs> there are four in there. I'm pretty sure there are four forces in there. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Cool. All right. Let's see if we can draw something relevant. That's something. Not sure what it is though. But um, four cards in here. Four. Cool. You got a big shadow there, you got a 80. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna ponder. Put this back like I draw a card. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Alright, draw. Alright, that's not awful. I'm gonna play scrub. Okay. You got two untaps? Yep. I'll force it. There's your force alone. I should have done that first, but that's Lose one. Yeah, that's fine. Ah, mild mistake. Yeah. So what is he, a seven? Yeah. No, he's a... Um, it's more than nine, nine. Nine, nine, yeah. Yeah. Uh, go. Yeah, I made a very stupid mistake. But it happens. Just like I said. Perfect with the dark. Give me a thumb here, nine here nine. you go, here's a 9. Just for the stream. So. Stream 9-9. Nine nine. That's fine. Swing for 9. Go All ahead. Alright, just something I can play. Give me a level one more turn. Um, you got it. Yeah, therapy. I forget to therapy for force. Oh, next turn was freaking deed. <laughs> forget to therapy before I did that. That was just very stupid. I should have seen force. I should have seen force. Well, and I resolved that, and we're able to live one more turn to pernicious deed. And then I would have cleared the board, and we would have been top decking and. I think my deck top deck's a little better than your deck. Because you're threat light. You're incredibly threat light in that I don't deck. know. Your some of your spells are going to cost a lot. Yeah, but I have seven lands. But I have seven lands out. That's true. And that board's I have yeah. plenty of lands. I just, yeah, I just made the stupid mistake of not playing Cabal Therapy naming Force of Will before I tried to land the Siege Rhino. Which would have allowed me to... I could have still taken the first nine, then I could have blocked the next turn, and then I drew the Abrupt Decay to kill one of your guys, so I would have blocked again and then had the deed, which would have resolved. And then I could just use that to wait a turn and just wait as long as possible and blow it up. Yeah, it's which might have cost me the game. It's gonna suck when I have a force of will in my hand and you have an abrupt decay on something. <laughs> and then you're just not gonna sure. be able to do anything. It's like, <laughs> oh, this is awful. Yeah, just one of those things I forgot to do. Is just so you you know the minute it. I asked where my force of wills were, you drew one. I drew one. <laughs> All right, I brainstormed into one. I think it's what it was. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. So, Yeah. And I gotta always worry about trying to um, assassin trophy your lands because you can just daze it back to your hand, and then you just save it, which is mm -hmm. you know better for you. So as long as I don't, you don't have daze, I can do that. Which will suck <laughs> for you, yeah. Yes. If that's your only land, you don't have daze. So cabal therapy, okay, cool. Assassin trophy your land. Oh crap! <laughs> All right, so I'll be on the play. Seven. Don't forget London Mulligan if we have two, three, four, five, six, seven. I can't keep. You're on the play, right? 
Yeah, okay. definitely gonna play. I can't keep the hand. Four lands. Uh, and like yeah, I'll keep nothing. Four lands and absolutely nothing after it's it. Pretty much a perfect hand. God, I mean, it's a mistake. I mean, it's an ar horrible hand, Silas. Horrible, but I think I'll keep it. Funny. Funny. I made one stupid mistake, but I don't even know if I would have won that game anyway. You could have gotten a threat before I did, and could have gotten there. Who knows? But this is game three, so anything can happen. Anything. Anything can happen. Let's see. Seven cards. Let's see what the London Mulligan does for Nick Fit. It gives us better odds to hit very specific things. Uh, yeah, we're going to keep this hand. Um, how badly do I want to worry about that? I think I have to put this back because it's just... Eesh. I don't want to put it back, but I got to put it back. But then I also have to just, like... Are you, I'm just gonna shuffle. Let's grab this basic forest and try to play veteran explorer. Basic forest. Wasteland debt. Can we play an explorer? I'm gonna respond to that. I'm gonna, I'm cycle, gonna street. cycle street roof. Want to draw a card. So that's me now. He probably doesn't. He either has forceful and wants a better option, maybe, or he doesn't have forceful. Um, that resolves. Okay, cool. Go after that. I'm gonna fetch, lose one, lose two. Is there 15 left already? Wow, that was quick. Play a Dalber? That's a Dalber. Go ahead. Draw. Oh, that was, jeez, that was near perfect draw. Alright, fine. Um, take one. Mm -hmm. Play a Swamp. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Sure. Uh, I'm going to name. Oh, I'm going to name Death Shadow. Ah, I got a Death Shadow. Oh, got to snuff out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold up. Uh, I'm just going to. Sacrifice this then, and Cabal Therapy, and then do you have any responses to the Explorer Trigger? I probably should have dazed the first one. I would have um, paid. Yeah, I know, but you would not have been... Well, you still would have It's a sacrifice, yeah. yeah. I guess um, like acid doesn't I don't have any other effects, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're just take the Brainstorm. Took. I'm going to take that Brainstorm. We're just going to be like, that's yes, it's not ours. So I'm going to grab my basic flames now. Salas has this uncanny ability to blindly name cards in my hand with the Cabal Therapy. I just name cards I don't want to see ever, and I, hey, they happen to be there. But did you um, get a hint that I had Death Shadow in my hand? No, I just... I, can't, I brought in a Water Grave instead of a uh, Underground Sea. No, no you just okay. that deck just does that, so I mean, I can't assume you have Death Shadow. Plus, you're way too high to even use Death Shadow, so... Ah, uh, let's see, I got these three lands here. You have days, we're good. Okay, trigger. Yeah, sure. Is it? Is it? it oh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, those are great. Uh, swing three. Swing three? Ow. Go ahead. You have a lot... Oh, my God, you have a lot of stuff. I missed a land drop a while. All right, uh, let's do this. Let's go ahead and tap three and turn a witness. Any card. I have two options right now. Um. As a result? I'm gonna do this. Pay. Okay. Resolves. Play explore. Mm-hmm. Spin. Okay. Explore. Oh, I wish you didn't have that goddamn savanna. Yeah, okay. Go. Alright. Draw. And the bug stands alone. 
Swing three. Go ahead. Draw. Mm -hmm. Checker. Mm hmm. Trigger. Gets yeah, a clue. I can finally get my tokens out now. First time in my, all this entire series so far getting this. So I get a clue. Alright, next up, I'm going to tap two. I'm going to play Diabolic Intent. Trigger. Um, while that's on the stack, I'm going to snuff out this guy. Yeah, snuff him out. Alright, he's gone. All right, you lose. Oh wait, I, I can't do that. I can't gotta, do that. I gotta, gotta fetch swamp. first. Yeah, you gotta fetch your swamp. Um, sorry. That's fine. So this is on the stack. This is on the stack. What am I at? I'm at eight. Thirteen life. Oh, you were fourteen before the fetch, and if, when you cast stuff out, you'll be at nine. Yeah. So, and you're stuffing out the tireless right? Yeah. All right, so I get to veteran explorer, and then I get to get the last basic out of my deck, actually, and then I get a card. I'm gonna crack the. I'm gonna crack the windswept teeth actually. Also, while okay. I'm doing that, just a shortcut a little bit. I don't need that actually. I'll just get that. that. No, not that. I'm gonna get the last basic first, then we get scrub off of the windswept teeth. Oh, I got. I think I only have that. No, I have four actually. Right? Three fours in this deck. There's six basics like that. And I block intent. Diabolic Intent. Mm-hmm. Yours else? Okay. Let's see, do I want that card? It's the only card in my hand, so I'm just checking to make sure that's the card I want. Tricky state. I know he doesn't have a cast spell, but I do want to have to deal with that, so. I do get an extra card there. I'm at 12. I do want to have to deal with that eventually. I'd rather deal with it right now. Alright, cool. Um, declare attack? Mm hmm. Attack? Take two. Okay, go. You got one card in here? Yep, single card. In English. Six, yeah, everything but one. Just for that right now, right? Swing three. Okay. Uh, okay. Yep. Alright. The things we have to tutor for. Where's Delta and go? Draw. That's something. One card in hand, yep. I like this build. Swing five. Block. Yep. Go ahead. Draw. Two, 
Seven? No, uh, that's seven, sorry. Six. Moving up. Uh, no swap, it's fine. Green sun. Okay. Green sun's good. Mm -hmm. Cool. Maybe I'll know what's coming here. We're gonna get a frog. Frog is there. Frog is there. Uh, While well, frog's on the battlefield, I'm gonna crack this. Lose a life. Uh, draw a card, then fetch. Because uh -huh. that's the way the triggers happen. Do it. Draw a card. And fetch up a land. Make the frog great again. Make the frog great again. Jesus. Alright, we'll get. I don't want to get that one yet. I want to get this bayou here. And then I'm going to play my second land. I get to play a second land for the turn. Right, Arbor. I'm going to say pass after that. Okay. I'll let you cut that. Hmm. Huh. Uh, brainstorm? Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Brainstorm's good. And Snuffat says non black. Yes. No. Extra value off the frog. Yes, it does say non-black. Yeah, extra value. I'm gonna fetch. Push. Yep, and you get to fetch away. All that extra value, jeez. All right, cool. Extra value. I'm gonna play shot. That's a watery grave. <laughs> <laughs> I was right. cutting your deck. This low. We're looking away. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Seven seven for seven, now. Seven seven, yeah. Um, I'm gonna snuff out this guy. Uh, before you do that, I'm going to pay one. Say, do I care? No, I'm just gonna. Uh, this guy's dead. You lose four life. Mm -hmm. All right, draw a card. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Shadow's an eleven. He's an eleven. Yeah, I get to draw, draw a card. card. Yep. All right. Go ahead. Upkeep. <clears throat> Upkeep, I'm going to. Let's see, I'm going to float white. Okay. Draw. Mm -hmm. um, use the white uh, blow up deed. Mm -hmm. Okay, draw for the turn. Trump triumph. Um, I give up. <laughs> That's good, because I got I had Assassin's Trophy and Green Sun in my hand. You were winning. <laughs> All right. So see, see, people, the frog. The, the power frog. of the frog. The frog can get through a fish. That's right. The frog eats the fish. I told dinner. you the frog was eating the fish's tail earlier, did I? You're know? right. You're and right. there it was, yes. right for everyone to see. Good point. See? So let's go ahead and just... I tell the future. No one believes him. me. No, he does. He does tell the future. Oh, my God. <laughs> I just like all the removal I've got in this deck against that deck. It's I couldn't nice find to... uh, too many counters. I think I saw one Force of Will the whole yeah whole time. Right? That was pretty bad. I just yeah. I couldn't find anything. And every time I had a daze in my hand, you had one land. That's extra. this deck. This deck is very hard to daze. Yes, it is because it has so many extra yes. lands out. And daze is one of those cards where it loses its value after turn two. After turn one, it really loses its value, but turn three, it's like almost unplayable. Mm -hmm. Um. So, and especially with a deck like yours, where you, you, you're having so much ramp going on. Mm -hmm. So, that's what I brought in. Um, you have a lot of um, creature spells, and by the time... There to start. That's, it. that's what I... No, that's... Oh, there by the time I'm going to have a big bad guy out, this might not be as relevant as I want it to be. You're right. Um, a lot of your creatures are... Too big for this to handle, and the small ones, I definitely do not want to destroy, like Veteran Explorer. You're right. Preordain's just like, I guess it's a flex spot. Some people wouldn't take it out, but mm -hmm. to me it's a flex card. You're right. Um, so you brought in these, I can't counter. These are these are brutal against me. Um, I think these did more work than anything. You hit me twice yeah, I with these, I think. Right. Yeah, I, yeah, freaking Triumph is yeah. insane. Here, this is what I took out. This is what I brought in. So Sylvan Library is uh, a little bit slow. I feel like it, the, the card quality is there, but just dropping it, not doing anything for a turn, I have to be able to keep doing things against you. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Gadda King just doesn't do anything. I mean, he stops snuff out, but okay, that's about all he stops. <laughs> Dude, that's when you put awesome. when you put that goddamn frog out, and you're like, I, snuff I had out, stuff like... out in my hand, and I looked at it again. I was reading it. I moved my car because I wanted to read that black part, and I was like, motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, cigar is fine, but sometimes that double white can be a pain if you wasteland me off the white and I have to get the second white. It's just tricky. Yeah. And Liliana doesn't do anything. It's, she makes her creatures just a teeny bit smaller. Uh-huh. But besides that, if I if maybe I get one thing off of her, but I'd, I'd rather have the decays and the tea. I'd rather have the decays and the triumph. I'd rather have some removal instead of those pieces against you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to um, bring in Blue Red Delver now. Okay, it's going to be fun. Thank you.